Overclockers, my name is Bryony and in this video we're going to take a look at AMD's brand new APU options for the PC gamer on a budget. They are of course the Ryzen 5 8600G and Ryzen 7 8700G and you can keep watching to find out what kind of performance boost this shiny new APU brings to the table compared to its predecessor and how it holds up against a dedicated GPU because yes you can play the latest games on just this tiny chip. We're going to cover more than just the specs with real world benchmarks, side by side comparisons and insights to help you make an informed decision about your next PC upgrade. Remember to subscribe and let's get into it. Here they are, the AMD Ryzen 5 8600G and Ryzen 7 8700G. If you're unfamiliar with APUs, it essentially means inside here you've got a CPU and a GPU on a central die. They're very efficient and best of all, they offer great core and thread counts at an affordable price. In fact, at the time of filming, the Ryzen 5 cost just £220 and the Ryzen 7 £310, around £20 cheaper than the 5000G series when they first launched. This makes them the ideal first building block for building an affordable gaming PC, compact emulator or powerful office system. Diving deeper into those tech specs, these APUs use AMD's 4 nanometer Hawkpoint mobile silicon with the Radeon graphics technology. The flagship 8700G has 8 cores, 16 threads with a 5.1 GHz boost and 780M graphics. 8600G has 6 cores, 12 threads, 5 GHz max boost and 760M graphics. There's also an 8500G available with 6 cores, 12 threads and slightly cut down 740M graphics. As I mentioned, these chips are super efficient and they come with just a 65 watt TDP, making them reasonably easy to cool. And we did use the included Wraith stock coolers for all of our testing. Other key features include Ryzen AI with a dedicated AI NPU to boost performance in supported software like the Adobe Creative Suite. Additionally, the RDNA 3 graphics support the FPS boosting HyperRX and Fluid Motion frames. There's also AVX 512 support, great for AI workloads and PS3 emulation. Moving on to how this all translates into performance, and I'll quickly go over what components we used in our test system. We used the included coolers, that's the Wraith Prism and Wraith Prism Stealth. If you're on a budget, I figured you'd probably be using the free coolers that came with the APUs, and I wanted to see how well they performed on these particular processors. For the motherboard, we used the Asus Tough B650. We basically had it in stock, and it does have the BIOS update available for these APUs. However, ideally, you could use something from the A620 series, which start at around £130, which is a real bargain. At the time of testing, we used the latest chipset driver available to us, which was 5.08.02.027. However, AMD did provide an updated chipset driver very close to launch, which will supposedly provide even better performance. Memory wise, we used the Corsair Vengeance Expo, two 16 gigabyte sticks, making 32 gigs in total at the sweet spot speed of 6,000 megahertz. Finally, we also used the Dual OC Radeon RX 6500 XT from Asus, an affordable £150 GPU that provides decent 1080p performance just to give us a dedicated GPU benchmark to compare. It's also a potential upgrade path for a PC using these APUs. There is also, of course, a fresh Windows 11 install and the latest Adrenaline software. Kicking things off by taking a look at the cooling performance and like I said, we used those stock coolers. The maximum temperature reached under load on the 8700G with the prism was 92 degrees. Meanwhile, the 8600G with the stealth reached 96 degrees, which was hotter than the previous generation 5600G at 81 degrees. 
showing that these new APUs do run a little bit hotter, likely due to the more powerful GPU package. So even though the stock cooler is sufficient, if you want to overclock or ensure there is plenty of thermal headroom for those long gaming sessions during the summer, do upgrade the cooler to a better fan cooler or even an affordable all-in-one. Now let's look at the artificial benchmark results. We use Cinebench R23, the new Cinebench R24, 3D Mark Firestrike and Unigen. They're great for an overall look at a component's performance and they can give us a good idea how our chips compare. Like I said earlier, these scores might actually be even better now as we tested a few weeks ago by the time you're going to be watching this video. AMD is always going to be updating their software and their drivers to boost performance, so hopefully you'll see even bigger gains by the time these APUs launch. In the Cinebench R23 single core test, which is kind of like gaming performance, the 8600G scored 27% higher than the 5600G, and the 8700G actually got exactly the same score here. In the multi-core benchmark, which tests those heavy workloads like video editing and rendering, the 8600G scored 25% higher than its predecessor, and the 8700G's extra cores really came into play here with a 28% higher score than the 8600G. In Cinebench R24, which is the latest and most demanding CPU test, the single core score was 24% higher for the 8600G, then once again pretty much the same for the 8700G. In the Cinebench R24 multi-core score, we saw a healthy 30% increase for the 8600G, then another 27% increase for the 8700G versus the 8600. In 3D Mark Firestrike graphics, a 1080p benchmark that takes just the graphics score into account testing the GPU, we saw a whopping 88% score increase for the 8600G versus the 5600G. The 8700G then scored 17% higher. As you will see later, that translates into some serious performance gains in games. For a comparison, I can also add the 6500 XT in here, which scores 67% higher than the 780M graphics in the 8700G. The overall Firestrike score, which tests the CPU and GPU combined, saw a whopping 90% increase for the 8600G versus the 5600G, and a further 16% increase for the 8700G versus the 8600G. When comparing against the 6500 XT, it scored 62% higher than just the 8700G on its own. In Unigen Heaven, on the 1080p high preset, which tests performance on the Unigen Gain engine, there was a 110% performance increase for the 8600G versus the 5600G, and the 8700G was 12% better, with the 6500 XT scoring 76% better than the APU. Now, what does this mean? Clearly, we can see there is a big performance jump with these new APUs. They offer an excellent CPU performance increase with the new architecture, so if you're looking for a budget-friendly Photoshop video editing PC, these are actually going to be a great option, especially that 8700G with its eight cores and 16 threads. The Radeon RDNA 3 graphics performance offers the biggest gains over the previous generation. However, we can also clearly see that just the RX 6500 XT is still significantly more powerful. Keep watching to see how this translates into gaming performance. All games tested at 1080p resolution with low settings. This was suggested by AMD, but I thought you could really crank things up to medium or even high in some of these games and still have a great experience. Any FPS boosting features such as FSR or HyperRX or fluid motion frames were disabled in the majority of our games, but check out our Cyberpunk scores if you want to see what FSR can do when it comes to performance increases. 
If you go ahead and enable AMD's rather clever software features, it could boost your FPS by around 20% in some titles. If you want us to test these features and discuss FMF and HyperRX in a separate video, do let me know in the comments. Now on to the results. We used a mixture of easy to run esports titles and more demanding AAA games, and there is a bunch of results tables up on screen now. As you can see, these 8000G chips are able to achieve over 60 FPS in even the most demanding titles. And if you're into less demanding esports titles, you'd actually want to pair your PC with a super smooth, high refresh rate 1080p monitor, and you'd be super competitive with no excuse except your own skill level. I must say I love averages because they're so easy to compare and they really give a nice overview of the performance across all of our different games and titles we tested. The 5600G had an average FPS of 98. The 8600G had an average FPS of 165. The 8700G averaged 180 FPS, and then our test system using the 8700G paired with an RX 6500 XT had an average FPS of 256. Let's take a look at the overall percentage performance difference in gaming between these APUs and the previous generation's 5600G. Then how this compares to the dedicated RX 6500 XT GPU. Across all the games, the 8600G had an average of 75% higher FPS than the 5600G. The average FPS from the 8700G versus the 5600G is 87%, and then the 6500 XT is 198% better than the 5600G. Overall, huge gaming gains from this new generation of APUs, and I'm actually very impressed with the gaming performance from just a single chip, particularly in Cyberpunk. They're going to be ideal for a budget gaming PC at 1080p resolution to get you started. You can play plenty of titles while you save up for an affordable GPU upgrade. I think a dedicated GPU would be a really nice upgrade path if you wanted more performance in the future. Now, are these AMD APUs actually good value for money? Being budget products, price to performance is gonna be very important. So I've also worked out the cost per frame. Lower is better in this scenario. And as you can see, they are all very evenly matched. You're essentially paying a couple of pence more the higher FPS target you're aiming for, which is pretty much as expected. So the 5600G had an average FPS of 98, and you can find it heavily discounted at 125 pounds, making it one pound 27 per frame. The 8600G had an average FPS of 165, it's 219 pounds, making it 133 per frame. The 8700G averaged 180 FPS, it's 309 pounds, so it's 1 pound 71 per frame. Our test system with 8700G and RX 6500 XT combined had an average FPS of 265, it's 439 pounds, so that's 1 pound 73 per frame. In conclusion, these 8000G APUs offer huge gains over the existing 5000G series, both in CPU intensive workloads and graphics performance while gaming. The AM5 platform means they are compatible with the latest technologies and the AI, NPU and RDNA3 graphics support AMD's clever performance boosting software for even more performance when enabled. There's also a clear upgrade path. They stay cool enough with the stock coolers, although they would benefit from an all-in-one, and compatible motherboards are nice and affordable. I think the overall pricing is very competitive. For example, a Ryzen 5 7600X costs around 200 pounds, the same as the Ryzen 5 8600G, but it doesn't come with those powerful integrated graphics. The cost per frame is also good, and you're not overpaying for that extra performance. 
Overall, I think these 8000G APUs are the great first component for a budget gaming PC and mean you can get building and play most games while you save up for a nice dedicated GPU to go alongside it as a big upgrade in the future. Alternatively, they can hold their ground as a standalone component. If you're only interested in less demanding esports titles, you don't really need to spend more. You can find all of these APUs on the Overclockers UK website and I will of course drop the link below if you're interested. Please do ask any questions you might have in the comments below or make any suggestions for a future video. If you want to see more of this sort of content, it is quite a lot of work for us, so please make sure to like and subscribe. We're trying to get to 50,000 this year. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel and I'll see you again in the next one.